so yesterday I showed this kit, so hopefully this video is still interesting for you guys, but I want to talk about this kit while you throw a couple of darts in here. Forgot the magazine was still empty. Obviously, we're filming this one immediately afterwards, but launching it on a separate day so that you guys have time to watch my content. So, uh, this is a strife build that I did. I said no more stripes. I've given it about as much time as I realistically could, but uh, when people honor you with incredible gifts of their work, you have to honor them in return with whatever you've got, which in my case is my work. So this is a kit by Re-Armory. Uh, he is a German and he's doing really good work. And then the most important thing is that he's doing unique work. There's so many rehashings of different yada yadas out there that like anything unique is really, really cool. And so when I saw this, I think I saw it on Instagram, I was uh, smitten, so to speak. So let's go ahead. And the only 3D printed thing on here that is not, um, Rearmory is going to be this battery door that I'm installing right now. So this is a Drac battery door. Uh, these are awesome. I guess they're compatible with these colored uh, anodized aluminum thumb screws, so you don't actually need a screwdriver to change your battery. I did just throw in a 2S LiPo. Uh, and it honestly is, is close. It's not a perfect color match, but it's close. And it looks good, and it lets us use the colored thumb screws. So, uh, back to the kit at hand. This is available from Containment Crew. It is the exact file that EOC and I use whenever we print a battery door like this. It works well with a variety of 3S and 2S lipos. Da 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 da. The kit itself came straight from Germany and it's slick. So first off, it adds this hand guard to the strife. Now you have to completely remove the heel bandolier attachment point, but it's so worth it because you get this awesome enclosed hand guard space. It gives it kind of a blocky, very geometric feel. I like like it a ton. He also includes these custom magazine releases, which are specifically mated to his uh, his handguard here, so that that fits into there and does everything that you need it to. Just to be abundantly clear, uh, that and then it falls out. I could like mag flip it out, but I don't want to more than anything else. Um, that's pretty clean. It's also nice. Uh, there are a lot of people who mess with the magwells, and when they mess with the magwells, you get this weird thing where you pinch the magwell, and now all of a sudden you have no gravity drop at all. Uh, this doesn't impact your magwell tightness at all, realistically, because of the way that this contours around the nubbin that mirrors up here. That's a lot of niche, niche details, but uh, the top rail I want to talk about a little bit. First off, it's flush. There's a back piece and a top piece. Uh, this mates into this piece here, which locks in via a little plastic nubbin. Since that nubbin is mirrored on both sides, it's very worker-esque in that you have no idea that it's there. And then the same way that people have been uh, doing the, uh, my buddy out in the UK, Tom, of foam data services calls this uh, dental mod because he thinks that the rapid strike and the strike kind of have teeth up at the front and so this is like a dentistry mod and that it uh, fixes the teeth so to speak or at least I assume that that's what he's joking about when he mentions it I'm not a doctor I don't know but uh, these are not workers, just colorized. These are all his parts, and honestly, uh, they have a much tighter fit than the worker pieces. You can see that they're staggered. There's the Picatinny that screws in, and then just a flush, flat blue piece that goes in there as well. But I like them. They fit better. They're much tighter than the worker ones. Once I seated them on there, they don't come out, whereas I have definitely, even on like the Equinox, up there, I've had the worker ones fall out. So I thought that that was a nice touch. This is where things start to get sexy. The top rail is cool, his optics, if you look at them either from that angle or this angle, are very unique, very nice, and he includes all the hardware, which is pretty slick. The hardware is these, uh, these machine screws that get hex keyed in there, but uh, this was a very tight fit, which is my only complaint about the kit. This front muzzle is just a mother for me to get on. And I'm sure that the same reason that I'm praising those tolerances on everything else is the reason that this is so tight, but you can't have everything all the time. Whew. Yes, I did just pinch my wrist. No, I'm not gonna cry about it because I'm a centuries old vampire. Oh boy, that hurts. Uh, so once this is on, there's that 
notch where normally an in strike barrel attachment would uh, go. And if you take this and twist the Allen key inside this hole here, it's going to lock a metal piece into that which connects the two pieces and once they are mated, they are, uh, they are rock solid because you're actually connecting 3D printed plastic with a sizable infill into ABS plastic and it's like mechanical adhesion, so to speak, that locks this into place. So that should be enough turns and sure enough, this is never going anywhere ever. That also lets you do this cool thing where if you take your front rail, and I've been doing this for years, but it's just a good trick to point out in this video. You slide this forward. Ah, I gotta stop doing this. Why do I keep hurting myself on camera? Okay, so. Not bleeding too bad. That's all that matters, because vampires don't bleed, obviously. Those regenerative powers will kick in any second. So this is the machine screw I was talking about. Different size Allen keys for some reason, but that locks in, and that's awesome. So this connects these two, creates that seam, so now it's attached up here and attached down here. That's not going anywhere. It's like Spider-Man when he's facing down bone saw. You're going nowhere. Uh, after you've done that, he includes this aluminum barrel and a custom printed kind of flash hider up at the front. This flash hider is aggressive, man. It's just like, it's cool. Uh, the fit of his aluminum is tighter than I'd like, but you can see that these are still dropping through. They're definitely like interacting, inter interacting, interlacing would be a wrong word. Uh, you can see that if I hold it at like this angle, it's not, it's barely moving through at all. And so it, I wish it was a little bit looser, but I understand why he built it this way. Uh, by building it this way and reaming out the side back here, he opens up a lot of options. You could mate it to an artifact cage if you wanted to. Incidentally, I don't think that it would be compatible with a Snickers cage at all. Uh, can I test that? I should be able to test that. All right, so here's the Snickers cage, also a German product. It would be really cool if these interacted properly, like if this was just the right ID to slide over the Snickers cage OD and it isn't so you can't have everything that would have been cool uh, but that's not how it works this however slides all the way in and then it kind of since I've got a Morpheus breach in here you have to slide it again to make sure that those two are actually notched up against one another it's not a perfect seal for exactly the same reason that that isn't but it is what it is in fact I think it might be the same uh, aluminium tube they're, they're using after that uh, to just kind of flesh out the kit I wish that he had a stock hopefully rearmory comes out with a stock at some point I went ahead and took a worker stock which is kind of sacrilege and I uh, threw that on here. It's one of the expanding ones, so you can set it to drack length if you so desire. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, this almost acts as a foregrip. You could put a really nice AFG down there. If you wanted to, you could also put an AFG out here. If you're me and you don't want to fool with the AFG, you just kind of bridge the two and use both to make your own AFG. Uh, the fact that there's Picatinny here and here at two separate heights, as well as here and here and here and here, it's just really neat. No matter which side you wanted to mount it on, you could put like a laser here and a light here, or a laser here and a light here, or four lights all over it, and they wouldn't get in the way of one another because of how they're staggered. That's pretty cool. Then you could put even more optics up here, like glass for whatever reason you would do that. I have no idea. Let's shoot the thing. We've talked about it aesthetically. Uh, a lot of people choose their kits based on aesthetics. I think it's got a really cool sci-fi feel. It doesn't remind me of any particular uh, firearm. The front end is vaguely Scorpion-esque, but as soon as I say that, people are just gonna come in and be like, I was a Navy SEAL for 10 years online and it's not at all what that, like, bite me. Biting vampires is a bad idea, just for the record, kids at home. Uh, that's just my opinion on it. I think that the kit looks ultra slick. The variety of colors are really nice. The fact that it interplays off of this green in a, in a cool way was certainly intentional. Let's fire it a few times. This barrel does add drag, but it's rockin' fangs revamped. 
So you know it's got that performance. So, super slick kit. Wanted to review the cosmetics of it. Again, I will link to his social media and if I can find his store, I will link to that as well. Huge thank you to Re Armory for sending this over for a review. Um, it's just a cool kit. What will become of this is an excellent question. It does have my first set of fangs revamped in an OFP cage with a Morpheus breech and worker flywheels. So it's like a pretty cool build in and of itself. I really built it just to test the fangs, but then I saw the kit, knew that I had to do this video as well. So I got two videos out of one project, which was sweet. Uh, this is probably gonna wind up being a Patreon blaster, guys. So if you're not already supporting me on Patreon and you want some of my, my work, that is realistically the best and sometimes the only way to get my work uh, in person these days. So that is my review of the re-armory kit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and as always, much love, Nerf on, Drag out.